This video is brought to you by Underpants. It's Mac Weldon. So I went back to the old inbox on my email and I had a recommendation for a movie called Oh, oh, oh. I forgot the name of the movie. Donkey King. Never heard of this one. Something new, something from Pakistan. So I looked it up on Google and I thought, hey, this film looks kind of good. I like the models, the posters look competent, and I've been on a binge of watching international content recently, so I thought, hey, let's check it out. Also, these Amazon reviews are like raging about the movie. You got some good stuff here. It's like, this movie taught my kid about politics. This movie is so important for kids to learn about politics that's that's the theme that's the running theme i'm seeing in these amazon reviews needless to say the stakes are pretty high does it deliver uh, uh. oh oh absolutely not this movie has one of the most convoluted stories i've ever seen it is absurd it is off the rails insanity the movie was presented with a narrative where it's like oh it's thoughtful. It's about politics and corruption and how the system is rigged against poor people. But we're going to tell our story through anthropomorphic animals. Please give us our woke points now. Thank you. What if we were to turn our great nation into a democracy and let the animals choose the king themselves? Democracy? What kind of nonsense is that? So who is behind this movie? Well, the movie was written by a guy named Aziz Jindandi. Oh my God. I looked it up and I already forgot how to say his name. I'm sorry, Aziz Jindani. Well, this guy is Pakistani. He worked on a show from Pakistan called Commander Safeguard, which is apparently a show that is about promoting hand washing to children. I mean, Americans have Captain Planet, so it's not too outlandish, I guess. But Aziz here thought in 2016, hey, let's do a movie. I'm going to start my own animation studio called Talisman Studios, and we're gonna make the Donkey King. And he did. He and his team finished this movie and it was released in 2018 and it was very successful in Pakistan. It was very successful in Pakistan. It broke records there. It got great reviews from critics. I mean, when you read about the hype for this movie, you're like, wow, this is better than Disney. It's better than Pixar. Nothing can beat this movie. Once more, I refer to the Amazon reviews, but then you watch the movie and you realize you've been bamboozled. Inky pinky bonky, inky pinky bonky, time for the king to be a donkey. Da ding a ding a da da, ding a ding a da da, lions are the kings through Ow! history. So I don't do this often. Uh, a quick update. While editing, it kind of occurred to me that as an American, there might be things in this movie that went over my head because I'm not from Pakistan. There might be things that are culturally relevant to the people who live there and on an international scene, foreigners would not get. Again, there's not much in the way of information about this film. I just wanted to at least address that, give it the benefit of the doubt, but still to be unbiased, to look at this film as somebody who is American, somebody who's not from Pakistan, yeah, this movie's not that good. All right, moving on. Wow, this is pretty awkward, don't you think? So what's the movie about? Warning, this is one of the most convoluted stories I've ever seen, so keep that in mind. Okay, here we go. The movie starts off with a parody of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with the donkey from Shrek. Oh, I'm sorry, my mistake. This is the movie's own original character, Donkey Mongo. Uh, Mongo? Uh, uh, Mongo? Earth to Mongo. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, homeboy here was dreaming and he snaps back to reality. Oops, there goes reality. Th there goes reality. Okay, so he snaps back to it. His uncle's yelling at him and we discover, oh, he's actually just a washer boy. He's a poor donkey in a poor city and all he really has are his dreams and that's it. Oh, and by the way, Mongu's father here is dead and he'll randomly appear and be like, don't give up, son. And I'm pretty sure he's voiced by Dr. Robotnik. So, you know, cool. 
Mangu, my son, listen. A good donkey can do anything, but you must first trust in yourself. Oh, how to describe Mangu. Hmm. Well, he's stupid. He's annoying. He's very random. He's very loud. He's very blunt. He likes to daydream. He wants to be rich. And he wants to have a girlfriend. That's really about it. I can't think of one trait that redeems him. He's pretty unlikable. And folks, you think that Disney can write a good song? Uh, sit down. Let me show you the best song ever written. It's called Washing the Clothes, and it's got some pretty good lyrics. Listen. Bring on the music! Washing the clothes, 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 washing the clothes. Wow. So Mangu, Man <laughs> Manga, so Mangu here needs to get this fancy outfit to the prince before some important party. We then go through the streets of Animal City and we learn about the political drama, how there's a tension rising in the people for political justice. Mongu, open your eyes. They'll never let you become rich. The game is rigged against ordinary people. It's time for a change. Corruption, as we've seen, cannot continue. Down, Down with the 1%. Talking about the 1%? Corruption? Billionaires? Hey. Is that Bernie Sanders' persona? Bernie Sanders? <laughs> also, these goats can't chant to save their lives. So, Mangu arrives at the palace and begs this royal vizier fox girl to allow him to deliver the clothes to the prince in person. Hmm, I wonder who the villain in this movie might be. Real talk though, she looks like she's from Dr. Seuss. Like, am I wrong? Am I, am I wrong? We then meet the prince, and he's an absolute baby. He thinks he's hot stuff, likes to do Instagram and Facebook. They actually say Facebook in this movie. I know the prince is immature. He's always on Facebook, putting up nonsense like selfies. After that, we meet the king, who is voiced by Dan Green from Yu-Gi-Oh. Ah! It should have been me, not him. Well, the king here has arthritis and he needs to step down. So he wants to put his son in charge because that's how monarchies work. But for some reason, this is a shock to the vizier. Uh, and the vizier, who whose name is Fitna, by the way, Fitna this d*** in her ass. No, sorry, I'm not going to put that in the video. <laughs> and the vizier, whose name is Fitna, is like, hey, how about we do an election? The humans do it. Pause. The humans? Excuse me? There are humans in this movie? Uh, why? Where? Do they explain it? Is there a reason behind that? Mmm, just wait and see. Just wait and see. It gets so much worse, and it gets very confusing. Oh, and by the way, you can't mention humans without mentioning human politics and how we are corrupt and how the animals can't do the same because it is beneath them. Even though Fitna here is like, we can hold a fake election to make the prince look good and have a bad candidate run against him to give the illusion that there's a choice for the people of Animal Town. Animals will think they voted for a king, but except everything's been already fixed. As long as things go according to plan, the prince wins. It's the same way humans choose their own king all over the world, you see? No, it should have been me, not him! We then meet Fitna's assistant, a chameleon named <laughs> Godzilla. And both of them are in like cahoots with this fake news station ran by a bunch of chimpanzees called like Monkey News. And it's so on the nose. These monkeys are like, we're corrupt, we're fake, we just do it for money, uh, we're actually Satanists who stab babies. It's not that bad yet. But again, this movie wears its themes, its message on its sleeves. Man, this movie is woke. These monkeys truly represent our three guiding principles. Speak evil, hear evil, and show evil. Then we jump forward to this festival where Mongu accidentally gets involved in a <laughs> bullfight. He actually gets chased by anthropomorphic bulls and then runs into a stadium and gets into a fight with a non-anthropomorphic bull. This one has hooves. This one has hands. This one can't talk. This one can talk. Do they ever explain it or why there's a difference? Because, you know, for world building's sake, I'm curious. 
Of course they don't. Oh, and by the way, Ferdinand called, they want their model back. Okay, so the bull is defeated, and then right afterwards, the king's like, that was cool. Okay, announcement time, I'm stepping down, and as you all know, I am a king, so my prince son is now going to be in charge, and the audience loses it. They're like, that's not cool! Ah! And then the king reacts to the audience where he's like, I'm just joking, there will be an election, and we'll put on a audition for folks who want to be a candidate via American Idol style. I'm not joking. This happens. They just cut right to the audition. It's maddening. It's so confusing, guys. Boom, we blow your mind. Boom, we blow your mind. Boom, we blow your mind. You can't handle our beat, but you need it. So the auditions are stupid. It kind of reminds me of Sing, where you got all these different people who are like, I'll do this. I'll do this. Here's my talent. Here's what I can do. Except instead, it's people who are doing that stupid, like, we can sing, but we can also rule a country. And that's when you get, ta-da, Ronald Crump. That's the actual name of the character. It's in the credits. Yeah, you know, it wouldn't be a political movie if it wasn't topical and cringy. I'll be the best king of all time. The greatest. I will drain the swamp because nobody will do it better than me. So Mongu auditions and the fox is like, yes, this is our candidate. He will be our puppet and we can control him and make him do what we want so we can get what we want. Also, Fitna does this really annoying thing where she'll break the fourth wall and talk to the audience. And like, it's so stupid. Her dialogue's like, hmm, hmm, I will use this donkey to control what I want and get what I want. <laughs> Okay, we can watch on the screen. We see what's happening. You don't have to tell us. It's like she explains the obvious stuff, but then the confusing stuff is like, you're on your own. Ugh, what a fool this donkey is. That he actually thinks he could rule this kingdom by himself. <laughs> so the campaigning begins. Turns out that both Mongu and the prince are both idiots, and neither of them are fit to run for this election. I guess it's a lot more like real life than I thought. Other nations like to send animals to the moon. I'll send them to the sun because it's bigger. So the fox and the monkeys are continuing to warp the media to make the prince look bad and make Mongu look good. And guess what, guys? It is time for a debate. And let me tell you, this debate is so much better than real life debates because you want to know why? It's a freaking sing off. And it's really confusing because the voices change multiple times throughout the song. Inky picky bonky, inky picky bonky, time for the king to be a donkey. Ah, dinga dinga da da, dinga dinga da da, lions are the kings through history. All right, fast forward to election day. And some folks are going out to vote, not everyone. But then, like, Fitna makes this very bizarre decision where she's like, we have to stop people from voting for M Mongu, Magnus. M we have to stop people and prevent them from voting for Mongu. And I don't know why. I literally do not know why. I mean, isn't that the point? Don't you want him to win? So why would you use voter suppression to stop people from going to vote? That doesn't make sense. Unless. And, th and here's how things play out. So maybe I'm wrong. So the bear is being bullied it's voter suppression and the bear lets out this speech by the way he's got like this clap where he's like i beg you vote i don't care who you vote for mongu or shazad i'm just asking you to go and vote so he's like we should go vote and now the people are rallying and going to the polls are you telling me that this was part of fitness plan was her entire scheme to actually get people so pissed off that they would go vote in force? Because if so, that is some 4D chess right there. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's dumb. It's so dumb. It's hard to follow. All right, so guess what? Prince loses. Game. Mongu wins, and the animals go Bolshevik revolution on the royal palace as the king and the prince escape from the scene. My lord. Mongu has won the election. I don't know how, but he has won. Our life in the palace is over. So now Mongu is in charge, 
and celebrates with a dance number, as is tradition with any political victory. Whenever George Washington beat the British, he did a break dance on stage. It was pretty cool. So at this point, you're probably thinking, I guess Fitna got her way. She's technically pulling the strings here, so I suppose that puts her in charge, right? Well, yeah, that could make sense for a movie. But this film is anything but normal. Are you ready for a plot twist? So it turns out that Fitna is working with this human circus ringmaster. Yeah, a human. There he is. There's a human in this movie. In a movie about anthropomorphic animals, humans are canon. And the only way this human communicates is through growls and evil laughter. That is not an exaggeration. He never talks. He calls Fitna on the phone and just, ah, ha, 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 That's the only dialogue. It's ridiculous. <laughs> they have some plan they allude to, and it's about weakening the government. Oh, man, sounds serious, right? Well, the plan goes through. And they put, like, a turtle in charge of the police. They put some giraffe in charge of, like, complaints. You get it? He's so tall, he can't even hear complaints because there's a disconnect. Lando, do you agree? He's so crazy tall that none of the people's complaints will ever make it up to reach his ears. <laughs> That's the joke. So animals start to disappear, and the turtle police officer isn't doing anything about it. And it gets to the point where the animals show up to the palace again and are, like, this close to having another Bolshevik revolution. But Mongu's like, stop, I'll fix this, all right? Give me a magnifying glass. I'll go find the culprit myself. And what are the odds? He goes out to the forest, finds this random house, and ta-da! He finds the missing animals. A la Zootopia style. Mongo! My lord! How? You shouldn't be in there, my lord. I mean, ex lord, because I'm king now. Wow, this is pretty awkward, don't you think? Get us out of this cave! Mongo finds the king and the prince, and he's like, What's going on? Who's, who's behind this? And then the true villain reveals himself, while Fedna explains a nefarious, stupid, convoluted plot. You think it's going to be something amazing, like some big picture kind of thing. No, it's not. Fitna and this human guy set this entire election into motion, not to take over the city, but to capture animals and sell them to the circus. You told me to let the elections happen, and I did. <sighs> let the donkey wear the cap, sorry, sorry, I mean crown, and then I will deliver hundreds and hundreds of animals to your circus. Hundreds. <laughs> Why? Fitna doesn't even get anything out of this transaction. Unless she likes to hump boots or something, which apparently might be the case. On the contrary, if I may say, he's the king uh, of the circus. <laughs> it's so stupid. I keep saying that over and over, but you don't understand how off-the-wall, bizarre, random, convoluted this film is. Nothing makes sense. The story is so unbelievably dumb. <laughs> All right, so here's the end game. Mongu's dead father, just like Ghost Yoda, shows up and he tells him, hey, you got to save your people because they voted you to be the king, even though Mongu did not earn it. And then Mongu's like, you're right, dad. I have to rise up and be who I need to be and he chases down these trucks that are transporting the animals to the circus. They're on their way to the circus, but I'm the one who's gonna stop them. At this part, you're thinking, they might explain why there are humans in this story. What's the relationship between humans to the anthropomorphic animals? They don't. They never cover it. They never explain it. It's just a thing. Moving on, we got an action scene to watch. You ready for this? You ready for a big car chase with a donkey and, and other random characters who we've never seen before in the movie? Let's go. It's a cowboy bebop theme. Okay, so there's this big chase scene, a bunch of wonky action, dumb dialogue, fake, stupid drama that I'm supposed to care about. Is, who cares? The stakes are so low because I don't feel invested. I do not feel invested in any of these characters. And at the end of it all, Fitna falls 10 feet into the water and dies. Ah! And then Mongu 
falls 10 feet into the water and apparently dies. Just kidding, he's fine. It's only like a 10 foot drop. You're good. So fitness taken care of and you're like, okay, it's time for the ringmaster. What happens to him? <laughs> Nothing. They, they never bring him up again. He's just out of the story. And here we are, the end of the movie. Mangu here offers the crown to the Lion King, the dad. And the dad's like, I'm far too old to be the king. You must be in charge now. And here comes the dumbest part of the entire movie, which is hard to do. Mangu's like, you're right. I'm the king now and I'm in charge, which means I'm going to make this guy the cop this guy, the chief of complaints, which means I am going to make you the commander in chief, which the lion accepts. I hereby state that you will be our new commander in chief. No one would dare defy my orders if they knew that you were around the palace. <sighs> I'm sorry. I thought the entire point of the fucking movie was that you needed to step down because you're old, but then you accept a role that effectively makes you the leader of the country? What? What, 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 what? It's like, oh, I'm the king. Well, cool. Uh, you're now the president. Oh, thanks. It's the same job. It's the same goddamn job. Whatever. I haven't gotten this upset over a movie in quite some time, so forgive me, folks. After watching Christian Vegetables for like two months and then watching this, my brain's about to snap. <laughs> and then Mongo talks to Barony Sanders. The bear is like... The stories are about putting the right people in power in order to be the most effective rulers they can be. That's the moral. That's our story about politics. If you put the wrong person in a position that's wrong for them, then nothing's going to ever work. Oh, I get it now. And also the monkeys are like, fake news bad. We won't be fake news no more. Hoo hee hoo ha ha. And that's the movie. Monkey news shall speak no evil. Hear no evil. And in the future, we will show no evil. Uh, sir, the ratings? I said, forget the ratings. All right, so what were my thoughts about the movie? Let's talk about the story. As I said before, it's incredibly convoluted. It's all over the place. It's hard to follow. And honest to God, it's just, there's no explanations for some of the world building. There are humans, okay, uh, why? They don't explain it. Uh, the prince can't become the king. There needs to be an election. Okay, why? They don't really explain it. Why does the king accept the role of commander in chief when he's old and the entire point of what the plot was about was you stepping down was completely erased at the end. What was the point of that? Why did you accept the role? Why didn't you make your son the commander in chief and then teach him? Ugh, so dumb. Just because you address a serious topic does not automatically make your movie good. When you look at these reviews from Pakistan, they're all like, wow, you talked about politics, just 10 out of 10, well done. Uh, no, it's not well done. As a matter of fact, it's very heavy handed. You have moments where the characters directly tell you the moral of the story. It's like My Little Pony at the end or G.I. Joe. Do you know my dad? Oh. As far as themes go, it's about fake news. It's about corrupt politics. It's about using power to get your way and hiding it from the people, underhanded corruption, stuff like that. And for character arcs, mm -mm, no, I, I don't like them. It doesn't feel natural. Mongu here starts off as this dumb donkey who's obsessed with money and wants a girlfriend. And I guess he's a bit of a dreamer, that's it. Then he's used as a means to an end and shoved into power and he's very incompetent. He can't do the job. Wanna know why? because he's a bad leader. They could have had a story here where he truly grows into it, where he tries to hear the complaints of the people, meets resistance, and then he's like, it's more than just girls. It's more than just money. It's about me being the best me I could be for this job and really surprising people being like, wow, he grew into his own. Trial by fire, he did it. But no, they went in a completely different direction. He's a circus master. <laughs> Why not? The only change of heart for Mangu was when his dad was like, go do the thing. And Mangu's like, I'll go do the thing. And that's it, <laughs> that's it. In life, you've got to face your problems, not Facebook them. So it's on a dime, doesn't feel like it was earned, doesn't feel natural, it sucks. Could have been good, but it wasn't. And for the characters, ooh, no. I did not like a single one. Fitna was awful. I think she was the worst. 
Mongu here was unbearable, where he was annoying. If they were trying to go for like endearing or kind of the lovable himbo idiot, well, they failed. He was just an idiot and that was it. Like Donkey, funny enough from Shrek, is endearing, where it's like, he's kind of a dummy. He's a bit much, but he's got a heart. He's sweet, he means well. He, he's just a bit extra at times, and that's his entire shtick as a character. But there's more to it than just being the comic relief. When Shrek needed a heart-to-heart -to, -heart to change his mind about saving Fiona, Donkey was there to save him, to convince him. That was good. But for Mongu, it just wasn't there. It was a dummy, a stupid, annoying dummy, annoying, dumb, dumb, donkey dumb. No, I said donkey dick. <gasps> Don't censor me, YouTube. But yeah, Prince, Bernie Sanders, The King, Fitna, Godzilla, fake news monkeys, just all awful. Very poorly written characters, none of them were good, which makes it really hard to watch the film. It's a bit of a slog. Now, the voice acting, that was a thing. So I tried to find the Pakistani, I don't think it's Pakistani, the, the Urdu? U-R-D-U, I think that's the language they speak. I tried finding the version that's the original dub, AKA the sub, couldn't find it. So I was stuck with the dub here in English for me, uh, for me and only me, uh, the English dub, which I was like, hold on a second. I've heard these voices before. You're Dan Green from Yu-Gi-Oh. You are Eggman from Sonic. And it's kind of funny because I know that this guy voiced a Russian bear in Squirrel and Hedgehog episode one, that North Korean propaganda cartoon. He voiced in that one too, and guess what animal he was? Ta-da, a bear. I can sing and dance the trot, but also have the strength of two. So as far as the voice acting goes, it leaves a lot to be desired. The dialogue's clunky, it's awkward, nothing feels natural. The fourth wall breaking makes it so much worse. I don't care about Fitna's monologuing. It's so heavy handed and dumb. Hee <laughs> hee, I'm going to stab this donkey in his stupid b <laughs> she says that in the movie guys it's crazy i thought this was for kids <laughs> and the music see that was a massive disappointment because when i watch animated films from india like roadside romeo i was like hey the music here is really good the entire movie itself not so much but the music was solid and i thought we might get the same kind of performance from pakistani music sequences I was let down. These songs are awful. Now, to be fair, that could be a dub problem. And the original sub is much better. God, I hope that's the case. But washing the clothes, 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 washing the clothes. That song's great. It's the best ever written. Everybody else should just give up and go home. Washing the clothes, 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 washing the clothes. And finally, there's the animation. So again, when I first saw the posters for this movie, I thought, hey, these character models look competent. It, it built some faith in me where I'm like, okay, let's check this film out. It might be surprisingly good. Heck, I'm optimistic. And then you watch the animation. Mm-mm, it was bad. Especially with the action scenes where you got like Mongu running from some bulls, Mongu chasing after trucks, Mongu running through grass. Ay, man, the, the physics just weren't there for me. It felt empty like as far as the rewarding physics behind it all and how the character models should be interacting with the environments ugh, I, I didn't like it. it wasn't good the lighting could have been better and then as far as like the set designs those were okay like the stadium the palace looked fine you got some particle effects at the start so there are like competent animators who worked on this movie but there were parts where it's like dropped in quality other parts where it's like okay they kind of know what they're doing i don't know why couldn't they see eye to eye what was the disconnect here why did things drag here but we're okay here go figure i don't even know what to say so overall this movie is a complete trip and if you like bad movies well then i highly recommend it It'll make you grab your hair and go, what's happening? So if you're a sucker for pain, check it out. I really hope that Talisman Studios can get their act together. It was bold to tackle a topic like this right out the gate. Politics as your first movie? <laughs> okay. I mean, Zootopia was able to commentate about racism, sexism. So it's not impossible to do, but like, Again, for you all to tackle this subject as your premiere film, woof, that was ambitious. 
and in my opinion, a bit much. Try to do some things that are a bit more you, a bit more story driven with like, I don't know, adventure fantasy, uh, sci-fi. Uh, hey, I want to see if you guys got any Pakistani lore. Let's do that. I'm all about like the Chinese companies right now who are doing like, oh God, oh God, what's it called? Journey to the West. That's cool. Like right now, I see uh, Chinese animation studios, Korean, Indian, where they're doing stories that are based on their own cultural lore. That's cool. I want to see more of that. I'm not sure if these Pakistani animators want to even talk about their lore. It's their choice. It's their studio. And obviously they did something right because Pakistan loved this movie. So, hey, what do I know? Personally, I think this studio has some kinks to hammer out. Not those kinds of kinks, the other kind. So it's finally happened. Sabre Spock is promoting, well, you know. Real talk though, a big shout out to Mac Weldon for sponsoring this video and for hooking me up with the most comfortable lounging clothes I've ever owned. A few weeks ago, I got a new pair of socks, sweatpants, a hoodie, and underwear from them. And I legit love them. It was so easy for me to go to their website, order the clothes I want, and then they arrived incredibly fast. I was very impressed. For the sweatpants, I wear them in the evening when chilling around the house and working on my computer. For my hoodie, I wear it when I exercise so I can build up a sweat. And for my boxer briefs, well, I'm wearing them at this very moment. And guys, they are very comfy. Mac Weldon even has a policy where you can refund your first pair of underwear if you don't like them. No questions asked. But that was never needed for me. It was a slam dunk from the get-go. The fabrics are comfortable, they breathe well, they don't itch, and honestly, the clothes look super fashionable and they fit well on my body. Not too big, not too tight, it's a perfect fit. And check this out, Mac Weldon even has a loyalty program called Weldon Blue. Level one gets you free shipping for life. Level two, which you unlock after spending $200, well, Mac Weldon will start giving you 20% off your entire order for the next year. So hit up MacWeldon.com slash Saberspark and use the code Saberspark to get 20% off your first order. Again, and I mean this, I love these clothes. I asked Mac Weldon to let me try out their stuff before promoting it, and they absolutely delivered. They're trustworthy, they make great clothes, and I highly recommend them.